say thank you first to Pastor Katria. Um, I know my wife and, and Mo were joking a little bit at the beginning of service and, and uh, about my, my, my mindset and what I look like before service when I teach, but I, I take an utmost seriousness when it comes to studying God's word and also bringing it to you because it's ultimately equipping you. And so to be trusted by our senior leader um, is an honor and we thank you. I encourage you to keep praying for her. We're entering a new, a new season. So much has already been said and I want to take just a little bit to go back in the flow for a little bit. I'm not going to stay long. I told you it wasn't going to be part five of the flow, I promise. But wouldn't be a problem if it was but I can tell you and just knowing what we've heard and what we've shared being being on the on the operating table is difficult it's not easy nobody wants to go to surgery nobody's excited to go to surgery but you don't know what you need until you need it until you get it and my one encouragement as we move forward for anybody that's had surgery or knows somebody that has gone through surgery, there, there's, a, there's a moment post-surgery where you go through recovery and you go through rehab. You have to get whatever the surgery is. But don't forget your follow-up appointments. Because you, you think, oh, okay, I had surgery, I'm good now, let's go home. No, you, you need to go back to the doctor so he can check he or she can check is everything still going the way we planned on it to go so I encourage you to don't miss your follow up appointments don't jump out the flow just because the sermon series changed because again it's a new season it's a new, new mindset it's a new thing and if you jump out too quick you'll miss it Please don't get to 2022 and miss it and wonder why you're still dealing with the same issue. Because you, because if you cut it away last week, then it's cut away. So make sure you go to follow-up appointments, amen? And, and just as an encouragement to, to you, Ignite Church Tulsa, you, Pastor Katria, God gave me three things. Ignite Church Tulsa is growing. Ignite Church Tulsa is being equipped. And Ignite Church Tulsa is on its way to its next. Now, if you don't believe one of them three things, I'm sorry, you, you might miss the train when we get going. You, you might wonder where you where, where did you go, what happened? But you might want to catch on, amen. I want to thank my wife, Pastor Angela, for being a support to me. And come on. Be, being a true helpmate in this season, I love you. To my kids who are here and, and not here, um, it's like a season in seasons, I tell you, when your kids hit a certain age. And so it's been an honor. I just want to take a minute to let them know it's an honor to see you into your next. It's a little bittersweet, though, because now I got new roles and new, you know, I'm still an authority, but they can establish their own mindsets now. So my oldest called me the on-call dad, so I'm on call now. But they do call, amen. And to Ignite Church Tulsa, man, we, we've been here a few months, and I just thank y'all for welcoming us. And, 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 and it's been an honor. And, and just when you think God is done, he's just getting started, amen. So let's jump into the word. I, I'm going to give you a few scriptures to hold on to. We're going to touch on one early, and then we're going to get the other ones at the end. But I want you to turn to Luke 14, verses 25 through 33. And I'm going to ask for those that can, if you could stand as we read God's Word. We're in this series called Army of the Lord. And um, there, it, this has taken me back to some nostalgic days. I served in the military for eight years, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. But it was one thing when, when your commanding officer walked in the room, everybody stood at attention. He's in the room, so we need to go ahead and, and follow protocol and stand for the King of Kings. And I'm reading from the King, King James, verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned to them and said unto them, this is Jesus speaking, if 
any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Less happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold, it began to mock him. Verse 30, saying this, began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king doesn't sit, sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, a, des a desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh, not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. And I want you to hold on to 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. For part one of Army of the Lord, I want to teach from the subject enlisted. You're in the army now. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. For this is the day that you made, Lord. Allow your spirit to reside in this house today, not just the physical building, but in everyone under the sound of my voice and watching online. Holy Spirit, I ask you to step in and I step out the way. Have your way today. Teach us, guide us, equip us, lead us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats. So I mentioned earlier, this took me back to some nostalgic times when I joined the military. Um, I, I made the decision to serve in 2006, and I served until 2014. And, and I remember taking that time and, and making the decision. And, and what I remember was I kept hearing this phrase over and over again, you're in the army now. And I didn't, and that's, you know, okay, like, I got it. Yes, I'm in the army, I, I know that. But what I wasn't catching was what they really meant by that. And, and for a lot of people, you know, if you know someone that's in the military, you may have asked them, why on earth would you do that? I asked myself that. The recruiter asked you that. Why are you interested in this? And I, and I found some reasons that you might be surprised when you think about, because we all know what the military is. We know its function. But when you look at people who are in the military, these are the reasons they join. Adventure and travel. Benefits. Job stability and a paycheck getting out of a negative environment, job training. Those, those are kind of the top five reasons they join. And I'll throw in a bonus one. They have family members that serve, so they want to uphold the tradition, right? Now, those sound like good reasons for anything, right? A job, man, I get to travel for free. I get job training for free. I get a paycheck. It's job security, okay? But one of the things what, that, I, that I realized is that I, I, was, I was in love with the benefits of being in the Army, not the function of the Army. And, and then in the Army now started making more sense. And, and what I found out in basic training, because while most people know, and, and it's true, basic training is about 10 weeks. The first week is called reception. That's when they get you processed. So they really can't do much to you that first week. But that second week, when you actually go to basic, that's when the gentlemen and the ladies with the hats, the drill sergeants, they introduce you to what that means. So that was my, oh, I'm in the Army now moment. That was the first one. Getting off of a bus, I'm 23 years old, and I have men that are larger than me in my face right here, yelling, I mean loud. And I'm like, I didn't do nothing wrong. I just walked off the bus, man. Like, what are you doing? 
I literally just took two steps off a bus with a bag of stuff that I had no idea what it was for. And I remember one other person, uh, a young lady, and she was from Puerto Rico. I'll never forget this. She stood there, got off the bus with all types of attitude, all attitude, rolling eyes, all of that. And if you know anything about a drill sergeant, it's only two things they really want you to say. Yes, drill sergeant, and no drill sergeant. And she rolled them eyes, and what happened to her was called a shark attack. And I don't know if you know what that is. That's when all drill sergeants in the vicinity surround you, and they're all yelling at you. And within two minutes, she was on her, she was on her knees in tears. That was her I'm in the army now moment. Because, see, you thought you could bring what you did out there in the Army. You, 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 can't, you can't do that. And, and, see, people get caught up in the benefits of being in the Army. You get caught up in, I get all these things. You're going to pay for college. But, see, if, I don't know if you caught it. I said I joined in 2006, and I know um, if, if you don't remember, 9-11 happened in 2001. So we were five years knee deep in two wars, Operation Enduring Freedom, which was Afghanistan, and Operation Iraqi Freedom, which was in Iraq. And so you take that question, why did you join a whole nother degree? Why did you join right now? In the middle of war, in the thick of the war, actually. Because what we see now, 20 years later, and if you don't know, and my wife will always accuse me of giving too much information, but I like to joke and say, you might win a game show and you might get a million dollars from the information I give you. Just don't forget your boy if it happened. But that war, the Afghanistan war, Enduring Freedom, is actually the longest war in American history. It was for 20 years. Longer than Vietnam, longer than World War I, World War II, the Korean, it was longer than all of them. And so people began to ask again, why would you, why? Would you join something that you could die from? Because that's another real moment. I was sharing with Pastor Katria another real moment. I, I think it was about mm, maybe four years in. I came 36 minutes from going to Iraq. 36 minutes. They were loading the bus, loading the equipment. And they were on, on their way. My unit was shipping out to Iraq for 400 days. And I didn't share, so when you join the military, you pick a job. And my job, I was a military police officer. So what the military police did at that time was they were searching for terrorists, clearing buildings, holding prisoners, looking for explosive devices. So that would have been my function. I can't even explain how many times I've seen a video of soldiers searching for explosives only to not find it in time. And, and when you join and you're enlisted, this is what you say, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States, no matter who he or she is, and the orders of the officers appointed over me, no matter who he or she is or what they believe, according to the regulations and the uniform code of military justice, so help me God. You're in the army now. Because they didn't talk about that part in the benefits. I don't even know all the enemies of the United States, but I gotta defend this country against them. And we're actually in the United States, we're actually the third largest military in the world. China's number one, India's number two, we're number three, North Korea and Russia. And another, the United States spends more money on military than any other country combined. We spend $778 billion on the military. And if you look at the top 15 countries and their spending, we, may, we spend more than them combined. And 13 of them are allies. So let that sink in. Only two of them are our actual enemies that we know. 
the other 13 are allies and we still spend more to be ready because you just don't know who's going to be your enemy. Because we've seen this time and time again. If you're a history buff like me and you watch the History Channel, you can go back and look at conflict after conflict after some of them allies were enemies at one point. And, and, and really, the, I want to just give you the, the function, and it's so what, what Minister Beatrice said earlier. She said the word land. And I want you to check this definition of army. Now, there's five branches of the military. There's Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force. The fifth is Space Force. We have to acknowledge it. However, that is the Air Force at the end of the day. I just want you to know. All right. Um, but Army is defined as a large, organized body of armored personnel trained for war, specifically on land. See, see we, we focus so much on the perks of the uniform but not the function of the uniform. And, 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 and when we see this, again, you get to the point of enlisting, but let me take you a little bit further back because right now the military is volunteer only. But if we go back to the 40s and the 30s with the larger conflicts, it was called a draft. And what that meant is young men at the age of 18 signed up for what's called the selective service. And if you look the part, and you, or at least looked like you looked the part, you were drafted. You didn't have a choice. And, and even today, the selective service still exists. I don't know if you know that. When you turn 18, you might see it on an application. Have you registered for the selective service? 18 to 25. So in the event that every volunteer force is eradicated, they pull the draft card. Come on, let's go. You in the army now. And that's the draft. And, and even going back to the Bible, I saw 1 Samuel 14, 52 says, and I'm reading from the New Living Testament, that this draft is not something f unfamiliar, even in biblical times. Armies, all of these things. And it says the Israelites fought constantly with the Philistines throughout Saul's lifetime. So whenever Saul observed a young man who was brave and strong, he drafted him into his army. You're in the army now. And it's so, even when we go back to our scripture, Luke 14, did you count the cost? Because see, again, I got so wrapped up in benefits, I, I forgot, like, I might die for this. I don't even know how sold out I was for the military. Let's be real, real. I really don't know. I was sold out for the school benefit, the bonus, the this, the that. I, that's what I like. That was great. I, real good. Sign me up. I get how much? Oh, I just get a bonus for signing up? You need me that bad? Oh, okay. Well, shoot, let me sign. You going to pay for my student loans too? Come on, let me, let me sign up. Oh, by the way, when you get out of training, you might be put to war. You might have to get on a plane and can see, when, when you get to basic training, it's a separation. You don't get to wear what you wore. You don't get to say what you say. You don't get to do what you do. Drill sergeant told me the easiest way to get out of here is to do exactly what you're told to do. That's the fastest way to graduate. And I had a buddy who didn't do that. And you think, oh, well, if you don't do it, they kick you out. Because mm -mm. you signed a contract. And see, mine was eight years. And so if you start messing up, you get in trouble, you lose some of them benefits, but this is one they don't know. They just restart you. Wow. So you could be in day 95 and do something stupid. You're going back to day one because you didn't get it the first time, so let's put you back through. Because you're going to honor your commitment to the United States military. And, and when we read this passage of scripture, if you notice, it, it says, at the, when we read it, the first verse was, and there were great multitudes with him. Because everybody was loving the perks of Jesus. Let's, let's talk about it. They, they was loving, oh man, we get this with him? Oh, I'm with him. Multitudes. Let's just, he talking? Let's go. He preaching? Let's go. He healing? Let's go. He's feeding us? Let's go, because I'm hungry. 
But he said, wait, 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 because even he saw it. You're coming to me, but you want to do everything you were doing before, but you call yourself my disciple. You, you can't call yourself that. You can be a citizen of heaven. You can, you can be with me, but you can't call yourself a disciple. Because it's one thing to be saved, it's another thing to be led. Because the, the scripture says you're my savior and my Lord. See, Lord is different. That means you're going to do what he told you to do. Because, see, you didn't have to do nothing to get saved, but you got to do something for him to be Lord. You, you can't just go back and do what you want to do. And, and he's telling people, did you count the cost? Are you going to build something? Are you going to really come and serve me? He t I mean, hate your mother, your father, your children, yourself. Do you hate them enough? And not a hate like we think, but can you deny that enough to be with me? Because, see, you're around me, but are you with me? And that's what he's asking, right? So we, we're all saved. We're all saying we're saved, but that was your enlistment. Now you're being equipped. And let's be real, real. Some people don't like being equipped. Because if you're being equipped, that means I have to cut away. See, I'm, I'm still in the vein of the flow because you got to be cut away. you got to have some stuff cut because I can't fit the equipment you need on your stuff. I, I, can't, I can't do it. don't look right. Well, that's why the military, they all wear the same uniform to let you know that you're not bigger than this. You, you're not bigger than what you have on because you thought it was, see, you, you joined the military about you. But what you do in the military is about everybody else. So let's think about that. I have to go serve in the military to protect people who don't think like me, who don't act like me, who hate me because of the color of my skin, but I still have to support and defend them. Because see, 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 in my own vein, I don't want to do that because you, you, don't, you don't like me because of how I look, so I don't like you for what you say. But see, when I put the uniform on, that's secondary to me. And we're going to get into it a little bit, but there's something, there's some things you learn when you're in the military. You have to, and I'm not talking the typical stuff. Yes, you learn how to shoot, you learn how to move, under, all of those things you learn. But before all that, you got to remember things that they say. You got to remember army values. Can you put that first one up? This is one of the first things they teach you. You have to learn army values. And the first one is loyalty. The second one is duty. The third is respect. Fourth is selfless service. Then honor. Then integrity and personal courage. Those are the seven army values. And random drill sergeants will come up to you. What are the seven army values? And don't be the one that didn't take, because they give you a little book. At first day, they give you a book. And they say, every time you have a moment, you need to read this book. And the first page was the army values. And drill sergeants will ask you, what are the army values? And then there was another one. It was called the Soldier's Creed. And it wasn't enough to re remember it. You had to recite it without the book. So you had to take time to study it. You had to take time to internalize it. I couldn't pull out the book and say, oh, let me read. You're going to be doing push-ups because you didn't follow the instructions you were given. And the Soldier's Creed is this. It says, I am an, I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior task and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. And this is the one again, another I'm in the Army now moment. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. Because the army's on the land. 
I'm a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. And there's one particular part in there, it's called the ethos. And this is the one, if you don't get nothing else, you need these four lines. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. And I will never leave a fallen comrade. Because just like I talked about having to defend people that don't agree with me, my man right here didn't agree with me. And we got the same uniform on. And the only similarity we had was that uniform. And you know what? That's all that mattered. Because we could be in the barracks talking, I mean going in about whatever we talking about. But when we put our uniforms on and we was on the field, I knew, we knew two things. He had my back and I had his. And it didn't matter. Because it's one thing to talk about it again in theory. But when you're sitting on the battlefield, because one of the things, one of the, the exercises we do is you, you're literally practicing being shot at. And you have to move toward it. You can't just hunker down while you're being shot at and wait for somebody else. No, you have identified the target. So you have to move forward. And you have to do it as a team. So when I move, you cover me. And then when you move, I cover you. So that means I have to put myself, I have to get up to see what I'm shooting at so you can move where we're going. So I'll never leave you behind. And that's placing the mission first. But I want to talk a little bit about basic training called boot camp. Because again, it's nine weeks, but there's different phases. It actually does it in the colors of the flag, red, white, blue. Red phase, the goal is to build you, break you down to build you back up. Because they need to get everything, because I'm telling you right, I've been, I've been talking about it at work. We're going to take something, a, a simple luxury like showers. How long you spend in a shower? 15, 20 minutes? You go to the military, you got 60 seconds. You got 60 seconds to take your shower. 60. Put the soap on, rinse it, get out. And if you think you're going to get longer, he's standing right there. Let's go. How long does it take you to eat? You got five minutes, if you're lucky. Taste it later is what they say. You'd be surprised how fast you can eat in five minutes without give, re reciprocating it back to yourself, okay? We'll just say it that way. But there's certain things you learn, discipline, values, teamwork, trust. You learn basic skills of a soldier. You learn how to shoot. You learn how to fight hand-to-hand -hand combat. You are equipping, you're being equipped for what's to come. Because see, at this point, benefits, I ain't even think about them no more. I, I, I can't even exercise those benefits yet. I'm in training. I can't even get the bonus yet. That's the other thing. You got to finish training to get the bonus. They don't tell you that part either. <laughs> I thought it was signed day one. I get the, they was like, no, you don't get that money yet. You got to wait six months after you join. So that's three months out, that's six, I'm six months out of training and three months actually in my unit because they want to make sure you're serious about what you're doing. Because some people do get to basic and say, I can't do this. And they, that's probably the one time they let you out. You, you, you out. And it's so interesting that we, you look at it, how many people actually join the military? The United States population is 329 million. So many people live, that's how many Americans. Anybody want to guess the percentage that are actually serving in the military? Let's throw out a number. 35%, seven percent, 25, 0 0.0039. Less than 1%. It's roughly 1.3 million actively serving in, in the United States military, across all of them. Less than 1% of the citizens of this country serve in the military. And I, I remember being asked this question, or, or somebody posed this question, maybe it was a statement. It's a whole lot of Christians in the kingdom. 2.3 billion, to be exact, in the world globally call themselves Christians. 
How many call themselves disciples? We, we don't know that number. We, we don't know that number. But if I take the math from the one, I can probably assume that it's the same. It's a whole probably less than 1% of the Christians in this world who are actually soldiers in the army of the Lord because they love the citizenship of heaven. We, we love the citizenship of heaven. It's good, right? Because you got your ticket. You got saved. You got saved. Can you hand me that one? And this is something that God gave me. Yeah, that one. God gave me this example. This is a Boy Scout uniform. Right? Shout out to the Boy Scouts. Nothing, nothing wrong. But what this is about is earning badges. Oh, my. Come, can we talk about it? Can we, can we, my ORU section said we could talk about it. So if they say yes, then we could talk about it. Because, see, the Boy Scouts are about earning badges. And I, and I don't have a sash with me. But in that, doesn't that sound very familiar? I got my salvation badge. And most people don't get past this. So this is what they look like. But then for the few that get more, I got my prayer badge. I got my worship badge. I got my, let me pray for you because I can do that. I got my worship badge. I got, I got my saved badge. I got my intercessory badge. I got my serving badge because I've been here for 13 years and I've been on the board. And so I need, did, I got benefits. Did this what I got? Don't you see? Look what I have. I'm, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Look at my badges. <laughs> Ain't that some mess? Ain't that some mess? Because I thought, I thought it was selfless service. Because this is self-service. See me. Look at me. Look at me and all my badges. Look at me and all my, all my things that I do for the kingdom. Look at what I do. Forget, forget the mission. I'm putting me first. I'm first. My badges are first. Oh, but if my badges don't work, I quit. My, oh, my badge can't deal with that. Because, see, you got, it got real, real. So when did, your, when did your citizenship get real? When did your citizenship in this kingdom get real? That you had to come to the decision that, wait a minute, I'm not equipped for this. You're not equipped for it because you chose not to be equipped for it. You chose not to be because you thought the badges would save you. Because you forgot you got saved first. It ain't about the badges. It's good you got them. I'm glad you can pray. I'm glad you can sing. I'm glad you can prophesy. I'm, I'm grateful. But you can get behind me with all that if you just want to worry about your badges. Because I know a little bit about serving in a uniform. Because it means a little bit. I'm going to ask Jalen to come on the other side and, and, and get dressed for me. I'm going to have him get dressed. Because quite honestly, this is all we worried about. Look, look, we got... Here's where we serve at. There's my Ignite Church Tulsa badge. Um, there's that other church I was at that, that was great. There's that other badge I got, right? And we want to throw this at everybody. Here you go. Here you go. Take my badge. Here you go. Who are you? Here. This is who I am. Here, here I am. What do you do, all this? You get to the point where you're so used to rehearsing the badges, you just walk around with the badges. You don't even say who you are. Here you go. Look at me. I'm in the army. Look at me. And the problem with this is you're not even equipped to really fight. Would you wear this in a battle? Because guess what? The enemy knows your badges too. And he really don't care about them. He really don't care. If you think we don't care, he really don't care. He actually looks at your badges and just laughs. <laughs> right here in the middle. I want them. Hold on, because I'm going to get out the way. I'm going to let you put it on. Here, lift that up. Because I got to make sure you're sure you right. 
Because, see, here's the thing. Matter of fact, let me get that back one more time. Because, see, your badges don't matter anymore. They, they somewhere under there, but they don't matter anymore. Because, see, now he's equipped. And, see, the reason you can get to this point is because if God gave you the equipment now, you just treat it like another badge. You just treat it like a badge. When it's supposed to be protecting you and equipping you for what's to come, the battle. And let me say this, the battle is not in here. Let, let's talk about that for a minute. Because this is, your, this is your base. This is your installation. In the military, they call them installations. This is where I get equipped. This is where I get fed. This is where I get ready for the fight. This is where I load up. Got my magazine clips. I put them there. I got my strap here. Turn around for me. I even got my hydration in case I get a little tired. Okay? I got my helmet. But when I'm like this, I'm ready to go out there. So riddle me this. Why do we come in our installation looking like this? Because there's one thing about being on an installation. You got to check your weapons at the door because you don't need them in there. This is a friendly place. So we come to church ready to fight each other. Why we come in here guarded up all the time? Are we really placing the mission first? Are we really focused on being enlisted in the army? Because, see, this is for out there. This is not for in here. And so I'm encouraging you, don't sit there walking into your home base every day where you're supposed to be getting fed, where you're supposed to be getting equipped, where you're supposed to be getting fed and led on guard. You can't, he can't even receive nothing in this. He told me early it was, it was heavy. This, this is a little heavy. See, you can't wear it in the Boy Scout uniform. It didn't, you're not equipped enough for that. They don't even give you all of this until you get out of training. You get like a basic one. I was sharing with, with Jalen uh, earlier, one of the last things you do in basic training is you, you, it's called a field training exercise. And you're out there for about three days straight, no sleep. And part of it is you have to march 12 miles in all your gear. And as an MP, my gear weighed about 50 pounds. So I have to wear it, all of this. And this, the only difference with this, it doesn't have the bulletproof plates in it that weighed 40 pounds together. One on the front, one in the back. In the suit, wearing it all, carrying the weapon. And I, and I was a saw gunner. So I carried the bigger weapon, and I got to carry that for 12 miles. Your badges don't matter anymore. It don't, it, don't, it don't matter anymore. Because this is how you place the mission first. This is how you walk out there. And I, I was sharing with, with Pastor Katria, my job, one of the jo my job right now is I actually work in juvenile detention. And these are young men and women, 14 to 17 years old, that's done any and everything you can think of. And I walk in that battlefield every day. Every day. And I watch other people walk in there with no armor on and get sucked in to it. But we walk in, I walk in every day, equipped, talking to them about God talking to them about choices, talking to them about what are you going to do when you get out of here? And why have you been back seven times? Because, see, that's the battlefield out there, not in here. This is where you come to get equipped. So you going out there wondering why I'm still struggling and dealing and, and hurting and, and I can't do nothing and it's so hard out there, you're not letting yourself be equipped. Take your, take your armor off for a minute when you come into the house. Sit down and worship a little bit. Sit down and pray and talk to the, to the king of kings a little bit. Get under the leadership and get taught a little bit. But if you already got, you know, I got my service badge already, you can't be taught. Because I've been here before. When I, and I love what Paul says. He says, keep pressing. 
even when I think I made it, keep pressing. Keep pressing. And I, and I want to pull up one more scripture before we get out of here. And it, it's in Galatians. And it's Paul. And he says, in Galatians 1.10, he says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And I'm like Pastor Katria, I like the message because it just slaps you in the face sometimes. But it says, do you think I speak this strongly in order to manipulate crowds or court favor with God or get popular applause? If my goal was popularity, I wouldn't bother being Christ's slave. See, we get, we, get, we get all that mixed up. We get this popularity. We think church is, is, is high school all over again. We, we want to be on the stage. We want to be this. We want to be that. But one thing I learned in the military, there's ranks. See, you just don't come in and be the general. You don't come in and be the captain. Because that first one, you don't even have a rank yet. It, it's just a little, little they call it fuzzy. You just a little, it's just a little fuzzy. You don't even have rank yet. You, you are literally a soldier. And as you get more equipped, and as you get more prepped up, you begin to get promotion. And one of the things I love, and God showed me this, once you're done with basic training, you don't go back again. You're already equipped with the basic soldiering things. So soldiers of God, if you're already equipped with prayer, let's talk about that for a minute. If you're already equipped for prayer, why are you calling 20 people to pray for you? Did you not pay attention in basic training? Because, see, I can't be on the battlefield with my M16. Oh, my, I forgot how to shoot. I need to go back to training real quick. I, I, I got to remember. They teach you to take apart the weapon and put it back together in under two minutes. And I had two weapons, so I had, to, I had to doubly know it. You gotta clean it, you gotta nurture it, you gotta remember how to do it. There's nothing wrong with asking for prayer, but I tell people all the time, you ask me, did you pray? I have no problem praying for you, but did you pray? What did you hear from God? Because if I gotta hear for you, you can get behind me with all that. You, you can get behind me. If you already know the basic things, why are we, why are we still working on basic methods? Because see, after you finish basic training, you have to go to advanced individual training. That's your job specific training. So once I finished basic, I went to MP school where I learned my job. And then after that, every other training built on the next. Every other training was a new layer of equipping. So I'm encouraging you as you come into this house, continue to be equipped. Don't keep asking how to pray when you already know how to pray. I don't know why I'm so on that, but I feel PK that we, we got to sit there for a minute because, oh God, it's so much, it's so much. I just need somebody to pray for me. God's like, talk to me, I'm right here. I'll never leave you or forsake you and you've been equipped, so why don't you talk to me and cast those cares to me, then girlfriend so-and-so or friend. Hey, you already know. You want to get something from me, but I want you to get something from him. Because whatever he got for you in that prayer is way better than me. He, you, can, he, you can go to him whenever you want. You can't call me whenever you want. You can try. I don't know that I'll answer the phone all the time. I'm just being real. Because people, thank you, we sleep. Four in the morning, I might not answer. iPhone got a new feature. Do not disturb, I'm asleep. You got to call me twice. You can call God once. He'll right there. But see, you got that in basic training. We, we can't keep going in the cycle of training and training and learning the same thing. Because we can't progress that way. I used to say it this way when I coached uh, basketball in high school. Freshman year, that was preparation. 
that was, that was, no, no, excuse me, that was the foundation. I laid the foundation for the program for the freshman team. Sophomore year was preparation. I'm preparing you for varsity. But when you get to varsity, it's all about execution. I'm not teaching you foundational stuff that you should have learned three years ago. Because when you get to the varsity level, I'm expecting you to perform. I'm expecting you to already have what you have. And if you don't, that's on the person who taught you, not on you. But don't get to the varsity level. Don't get to the battlefield trying to be trained. It's too late then. Your enemy's not going to care if you trained or not. They won't care. When you out there fighting whoever it is that the enemy of the United States is, they do not care how much training you have. They don't care about your badges. They don't care about anything. Because again, I want you to go back to that one picture with um, the Army values, and I want to know if you caught it, and this will be what I'll close on. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. The other one, go to the other one for me. If you notice, it's spelled, the, the word, the first letters are a word. It's leadership. Because one of the things in the army that you learn is yes, you have leaders, but at some point, you have to be responsible to yourself. Before anybody else leads you, you have to make the conscious decision of yourself. And I remember moments in basic training where you saw people get leadership. When you saw some soldiers on the march that fell down and the whole platoon stopped to go get them. And all 200 of us lifted them up and walked them to the battlefield, walked them to the finish line. Making the personal decision that no matter what temptation or anything comes my way, I will always place the mission first. Because see, now that you're in the army now, everything else is secondary. Yes, it's still there. You have your issues. You have your things you're dealing with and all of that. But remember, you cannot accept defeat either. So when you put this on, I don't want to hear I'm defeated. How could you be if you're equipped? And, and one of the things in the military, that there's again, where there's ranks. There's the highest rank in the Army. It's called General of the Army. And they only have that rank during major conflicts. The last time, I believe, was World War II. And we know who the General of this Army is. And so we're getting our equipping, our learning, our everything from him. And so just like in basic training, the Lord only wants to hear two things. Yes, Lord. And amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I said this a few weeks ago on my social media. Obedience is for you. Obedience is your test. What it produces is for everybody else. So if you made the choice of salvation, there's another piece to that. Because you can't just walk around with your salvation badge on. And it's great. There's nothing wrong with you. You're a citizen of heaven. Amen. We want that. But I know for me, I need some, I need some soldiers behind me. Because at some point, I won't be able to fight as much. So at some point, I need to know step up here and take the lead for me and I can stand back here because see and the only reason I can do this is because it's selfless I'm not worried about where I was I can come over here and sit down here and talk it don't matter to me because now the camera's on him because that uniform that armor being a soldier is more important than position. It's more important than prestige. It's more important than anything else that I can even think of. And one of the things I, 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 I share with PK is, 
If you notice on this uniform, you don't see his badges. That don't mean he don't get them. You still get awards, you get achievements. Only two times you see a soldier's uniform, or his badges. When he's in his dress uniform, or at his funeral. And some of the highest honors you get not even being here. Some of the high, the medal of honor is usually awarded to somebody that's no longer here. They don't even get to reap the benefit of the benefit because they made the ultimate sacrifice. So my question to you if you're a citizen of this kingdom. How many soldiers are in here? Because I don't want you to say you're a soldier if you ain't one. Because the enemy will take you out quicker than you could say, yes, Lord. Or as soon as you say it, he right there meet you. Hello. So my prayer everybody in here you've made the conscious decision to be a citizen count the cost of being a soldier because our fight is out here it's not with each other it's not with other churches because that's the thing we're just honestly we're we're just a platoon in the army we we not the army because there's units in the army. There's one army. And, and on the uniform, if you, uh, Jalen, turn it, show your left shoulder. Oh, the other way. Oh, keep going. You good, right there. That's where your unit patch goes. On your left shoulder. And on the opposite shoulder, that's the unit you've been to war with. It's not out front everybody to see is here so you remember that's for you everybody bow your heads close your eyes Father God even as we come here right now Father God we just thank and praise you for what you're doing at Ignite Church Tulsa And even as we step into this next, Father God, we understand the power of the call. We see the cost, Father God. We know we have to die from ourselves in order to serve you. We cannot be a disciple without that. So even as we sit here, Father God, I just thank and praise you for every person under the sound of my voice and watching online. And if you call yourself a citizen of heaven, you have citizenship. There's more that's required of you, says God. He's looking for soldiers. He's looking for disciples. Even as the multitudes follow Jesus. not get caught up in the benefits of this kingdom but let us get caught up in the function because for every soldier is equipped to go out there and save souls Father God because the war is here and even as we move and even as we get equipped Father God I just thank you that we continue to build we continue to grow we continue to allow show yourselves in us. We keep hearing this the last few weeks. We see God moving in real time. We see God
bayonet won't help me in this new season of life. And I even love the concept of the drone. I can send it out. So I can send the Spirit of God before me. You sitting here trying to wrestle all the time. You know how to pray. I'll never forget Mother Ma told me this a few years ago. She said, you have a soldier standing right next to you. Says the Spirit of God. Why haven't you used it yet? close your eyes for a moment. As the man of God went forth with the word of God as we get ready to start this whole sermon series and so much more to come. Those that are in the room that need to make a decision to be a part of the citizen, to be a citizen of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit has been drawing, pulling at your heart. Like Pastor Nick said, the Lord already he made the ultimate sacrifice before he, before you even made the decision to be one of his. Everybody, eyes closed, please. If that's you and you know that the Lord is drawing your heart and you want to be a part of this kingdom, a part of the mission, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. If you want to be a part of this love of God, come on. He already gave his son. He gave the ultimate sacrifice for you to be. Jesus died on the cross so that you could say yes. I saw about five hands. Put your hands down for me. Those, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, and one thing that Pastor Nick began to talk about was the mission. He began to talk about selflessness. And he began to talk about covering comrades that are on the field. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, for many of you, 
You've been going around and around in the circle in basic training. I want everybody paying attention, please. Going around and around in a circle with basic training. And what many of us don't realize is when we're going through our own thing, we forget about those that are assigned to our lives. And many people that are waiting in the battlefield, waiting on your yes. But because we can't come out of boot camp, because we can't get past that initial place that God had, that, 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 of, the, of the equipping and the training, we get stuck going around and around in a circle. And God is ready to, for you to go ahead and be equipped. I hear a lot of you saying, but I, I don't know if I can, and I don't know if I'm qualified, and I'm still dealing with this and dealing with that. And God said, wait a minute, come on, come on, come on up and out. You've been in this thing. I hear the Lord saying, you've been in this thing a while, come on. You know, you know how to pray. So I'm, I'm, listen, you know how to fast. You know how to do what it is that God has called you to do, but you, you've talked yourself out of your next place. You've talked yourself out of your advancement, out of your promotion. And God is ready to equip you for the assignment on today, but it's going to require a yet. If that's you, eyes closed, lift up your hands in the room. Come on. I know, I know the Lord is speaking. Come on, I, if that's you, and you've been, you've been complacent on purpose because you've been afraid of the next. You've been afraid. You've allowed the enemy to make you afraid and your equipment is waiting on you your armor is waiting on you the assignment has already been given but you chose to stay in boot camp you chose to stay in training and god says i've been waiting on you your assignment is already been given it's time for you to go into your specialty saith the lord oh god no i hear god I want everybody to stand up on your feet. We have a, a culture, culture cold and verbiage here at Ignite Church Tulsa. No one does life. We do life alone here. So we're going to go ahead and embrace those that want to be a part of this citizenship. We're going to all pray. Everybody lift up your hands and close your eyes. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you a sinner. But God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your son, Jesus, that died on the cross and was raised again on the third day for my sins. I confess Jesus to be in the Lord of my life I receive you into my heart I trust you God I give my life to you and I ask you to be Lord of my life and I enter into sonship or daughterhood and I thank you Lord that I am saved so I'll put your hands together for those that are coming from you for five of you that gave your life to the Lord. I want to personally get in contact with you this week. So please give her your name, your email address, your phone number so that I can call you so that we can welcome you into the kingdom. Next thing, you need to have a church home. Don't just get be, become a believer and not get into a fellowship of believers that can surround you, that can help you, that can love you, on you. To God be the glory. Now for the second call for those of us that are ready to advance 
Oh God, I feel the anointing. See, this is what hell's been fighting you about. This is what hell has been coming against you for. What has been the battle? What has been the fight? Because the enemy knew if you got complete understanding of who you are. My God, today, the hell is in trouble. Oh God, today, lift up your hands for those of you that lifted up your hands. Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For those of us, God, that have been complacent on purpose, forgive us, God, for not answering the call sooner. But Lord, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, God, for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The people of God who's giving you another yes. I thank you for the equipping of the saints even now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cast off every fear. knowledge of your word give us a teachable spirit give us an understanding oh God as you begin to give us our specialties as you begin to call us with the purpose and the destiny that you have in store I cover every person that has made this decision under the blood of Jesus I speak that no weapon formed against them will be able to prosper in the name of Jesus we loose the angels of the Lord on assignment to encounter about them now in Jesus if that was you as well, I want you to go to the, uh, the welcome center. Give us your name so that we can get you hooked up into some classes, training. Because it's not just about making a decision, but it's now about execution of your decision. To be God be the glory. We love you and we thank God for you. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor Angela. Monday hits. So I pray in the name of Jesus that God covers us with his precious blood. God, that you speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit. What it is that we need to hear from you. What it is that we need to do. Gird us up. Guard us, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus in a mighty way like only you can. Amen. You guys, please um, as you leave, let's clean up behind ourselves. Let's leave quickly. We do have another ministry that comes in right after us and we want to be respectful. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed week. Remember, we are Ignite Strong. <laughs>